this is the second take because there was a really annoying screeching racket the first time and then after my wife quieted down hey this bird started to make noise in the first video i decided that the problem with this generator or this generator could be solved by nothing more than a set of new piston rings which was pretty good news i thought that i might be able to source the parts locally and even if i couldn't certainly generac factory parts should be able to help me out right wrong both times nobody has piston rings for this generator i called generac factory support and even though they acknowledged that the part number i was looking for here it is for those of you keeping track of my work was an active number in their system they couldn't get me a price and after researching it and waiting for a few days even when they could get me a price it would be at least 15 business days until i had the parts in my hand that's a fortnight here here so rather than be at the mercy of generac's robust supply chain i decided to look for solutions in a different way if i look on the back side of this piston which cleaned up really nicely by the way i soaked it in gasoline for a few days and just periodically scrubbed it on the back side here there is a stamp that says ny which sounds promising Ooh. i was i was wondering i wonder where they're based brooklyn staten island north yorkshire <laughs> north yorkshire would take the terriers not exactly ny piston is actually the shandong zinting jing gong piston company those sneaky guys this got here on a boat. Minimum order 5,000 units. I think that's a dead end. The fact remains, I live in a reality where this generator works. I just need to figure out how. Let's have a look at this cylinder. People have been making internal combustion engines for about 100 years, so there has to be a pretty good chance of finding some rings that will work that are also available. The inside measurement of this cylinder is just about 48 and a half millimeters after conversion. Remember, we're dealing with 10 spots here, not the king's decree. I've got a diameter of 48 and a half millimeters. And if we look at one of these broken ring pieces that didn't fall off the porch, they've got a thickness of about one and a half. I forgot to measure the width when I was searching, but that's okay. One less thing to worry about. It so happens that a set of piston rings from a 1960s Honda CT200 Trail 90 motorcycle is a pretty close match. Now here's the question. What's easier to get my hands on? A 50-year-old antique Japanese motorcycle part or parts for a one-year-old American-made, allegedly, generator. You guessed it. Here, on the deck, new old stock piston rings. So the question now is, are these going to get along? I'll admit the arrangement is a little bit unconventional. Have you checked them yet? Do you know if they fit? I have not tried these on yet, so my mood may change at any time. Well, it's not great to be in with. The thickness is right on, and as far as the width goes, it looks like the outside diameter of the piston stands proud of the ring, so I think I got lucky there. I do anticipate having to adjust this ring gap because the cylinder bore for a CT200 was 49 millimeters in diameter, and my generac is 48 and a half so when this is installed into the bore it's very likely that these two ends will contact so we can see here with the ring installed there's a little bit of overlap no touching no touching so i need to grind away a little bit of material on the ends of the ring to do that get out your hard hats and sign your waivers everybody we're going to use the dremel oh my mom has one of those so we'll get this set up here. Don't you even have a vice? I've got a few. Oh! They help me cope. <laughs> so we'll plug that in. 
and here we go. I'm trying to take off just a little bit at a time here because I can't put it back. Okay, I trimmed off enough metal that the ring fits in the cylinder. I'm looking for a gap right here of eight thousandths of an inch. A piece of paper is about four thousandths, and right now it's even too tight for that. So I'll grind it down just a little bit more. Check it again. I think we're good right there. Now I'll just repeat the process for the other ring, then file down any sharp edges and see how they fit on here. Okay, I've got both of those guys installed. I can't use the new oil ring because it's too thick for the groove. So my only choice is to reinstall the original part and hopefully it's got some life left in it. Almost, almost got it. A fully assembled piston. Let's put this back together. First thing to reinstall is the connecting rod and piston assembly. I'll slide this in from the top of the motor, then go around underneath here and install this rod bearing cap. Now things get kind of dicey when it comes down to how tight these bolts should be. I couldn't find any factory numbers, so I'm thinking 90 inch pounds. Feels about right. It's an art and a science. Time to close this thing up. Don't make me come in here again. Now I can put on the stator and the twirly whirl. Ow! Is that your finger? Ow! Yes! Ooh, what can I do? You could change the laws of physics. Ooh. Magnets. Okay, steady now. And the perfect torque for this is just to where I can't hold it anymore. Cover up the dynamo now, or torture device if you ask my fingers. Time to put on the head. I'm going about 90, 100 inch pounds on these two. There has to be a certain acceptable range between so loose that it leaks and so tight that something breaks. Mm, it seems I've forgotten something. Maybe, nope, that won't work. Oh well, it happens to the best of us sometimes. Yeah, sometimes it happens to you. Okay, what's next? I think it's time to put the engine into the pan. I ought to degrease it first though. That's better. Okay, that's back in the cradle now. I want to put this cover back on, but before I do that, I should have a look at the valve lash. I'd like to see about six thousandths of an inch. Two pieces of paper stacked on top of each other is between seven and eight. And that just barely fits in there really tightly. So we'll call that good. Getting this valve cover put on is really a watershed moment because- Wait, that... what did you just say? Watershed? Watershed. Is that the same as a, a water closet? <laughs> it means that the engine is completely put together and now all we need to do is install the rest of these parts. Nope. I know you're laughing. <laughs> no one knows what watershed means, well, including I, me. <laughs> nobody knows what it means, but it's provocative. <clears throat> if it runs, I'll clean the air filter. I promise. Okay, we're making some progress here. I think I ought to tackle these wires. It's times like these where having a strategically captured screenshot really comes in handy. We're getting really close now. I'm nervous. Camera girl, no matter what happens, make sure I post this video. Even if it runs? <laughs> Even if it runs. Okay. <laughs> so just a few more parts. That's it. It's put together. Keep the camera rolling. We're not going to stop until either this starts or I bow my head in defeat. Gasoline in the tank. I've put oil in the sump. I feel confident right now, but not quite confident enough to buy a new gas cap. So a paint lid will have to do the job. Choke is this way. What are my chances? Still doesn't have a whole lot of compression. I want to just pull this lightly a few times to get the oil worked around.
<laughs> it runs. And it's still running. And it runs nice. <laughs> it's quiet. Wow, it's quiet. We have a fully functioning command center over here. An hour and 18 minutes remaining on this fuel at this load, which is zero. Gas gauge. I don't know what that means. We're on standard mode right now. It should probably idle down if I click down here. Yeah. And if I turn it to turbo, it should rev up a little bit. That's a good little machine. I like it. It's quiet. It was quieter before. That's okay. So what's the damage for this little project? We have a total cost of $51.07. That includes the price of the generator, the piston rings, and I splurged a little bit for credit where credit is due. How's that look on there? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so what do you think, camera girl? Is it a success? Well, you don't know if it works though. Yeah, of course it runs. But, I mean, does it work? I, yeah. It's, it, it's a generator. Have you plugged anything into it? Oh! We're going to have to wait a little while and find out. I don't know. Okay, I think we're just about ready. I've only got one chance here. Turn off the light. See how it looks. Nice. Jen, could you come out here for just a minute? Sure, of course. Okay, uh, so you had a very relevant question earlier about the generator. Yes. Does it make electricity? Yes. I'll have to do this by feel. Choke. What are you doing? <laughs> okay, it's lit up. Come here. Okay, do you see this little plug here? Yes. Plug that in. Okay. It's a generator. It's great! I thought it should generate something positive. <laughs> That's right? positive! <laughs> you light up my life. <laughs> and so does the Generac. Thanks for watching.